Hello, NG Houston. So I'm super excited tonight uh, because we have Hans and Mike talking about the CLI. Actually, Hans is talking about the CLI and Mike is just here to heckle Hans. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and we have some panelists. So let's go and say hello to our panelists. Uh, Paul from Angular Bootcamp, you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. Paul Spears, Angular Bootcamp. Well, hello. Thanks for joining us. And Ilya, we got Ilya back. Ilya is a lot of fun. Ilya, you want to say hello? Hi, guys. It's uh, nice to be here. I'm excited to hear about the schematics, as always. <laughs> it's nice to have you here. And Thank Justin, you. Justin and I have uh, very exciting news today because Justin and I became GDEs today. So we're like in the uh, a cool little club. So uh, I'm pretty excited. So congratulations, Justin. Oh, and I got a balloon. Samantha got me a balloon because she was so happy for me. It's pretty, uh, it was a pretty amazing day. You want to say hello, Justin? We know who you are, but say hi, anyone. I do want to say hi. Uh, congratulations, Bonnie. I'm very excited for you. That's awesome. Congratulations to you, too. Uh, thank you. appreciate that. I'm Justin Schwarzenberger, uh, Schwarty, uh, from Narwhal, also a host of Angular Air. And uh, yeah, that's it. And, I'm and how, today. why are you and Mike? OK, well, let's ask either one of you. Y'all are wearing matching shirts, and I don't think that was a coincidence. Now I want the shirt. Where did this, It was like not. I. I, I'm, uh, I, yeah, Mike sent me this shirt, so I have to wear it. But I love it, too. <laughs> Mike? <laughs> Mike, say hello, Mike. <laughs> oh, I, I was, but you turned into just an icon now. Oh. I don't Sorry. see you, so I didn't hear you. Hi, I'm Mike. I've got my local oh, storage Mike. hat on. I love that hat. I do, I do too, but it's like 65 degrees here today yeah. after being like negative for a while. So it's too hot. I like your haircut. Thank Looking you. Looking sharp. Okay. Last but not least, we have Hans. And I have to tell you guys, Hans has been on the show before, but I didn't really know Hans very well. And I was super intimidated, so I didn't really ask him a whole lot of questions. But now uh, we bonded in London, and, and I found out that Hans is actually really silly. <laughs> Once you get to know him, he's so much fun. So, uh, so Hans, I'm really glad to have you back on the show. Do uh, you want to say hello and introduce yourself? Yeah, it's good. To, uh, it's great to be here. Congratulations on uh, being a GD, by the way. Thank you. And um, just want to wish you all an happy new year, 2018. It's going to be an awesome year. Um, and uh, yeah, just a little bit about me. I'm Hans Larsen. I work at Google on the Angular team. I'm the lead of the Angular CLI and uh, the uh, other efforts known as the dev kit, which, is, which contains for now uh, schematics, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I, I guess. But yeah, that's, that's me. That's who I am. That's awesome. Uh, she, she said I'm silly, but I'm trying to be serious sometimes from time to time, because when I try to be silly, sometimes it doesn't end up <laughs> so well. So. <laughs> I no, but you're a lot of fun. I'll take care of the silly. <laughs> okay, good. Y'all crack me up. Well, I'm really glad that you're both here. I'm glad that everybody's here. And uh, so Hans, you have, uh, we were going to talk about the schematics. And I know uh, the schematics is like so hot right now. Everybody's really big into schematics and everybody's jumping on board, um, making schematics. We have NX schematics and NGRX schematics, and I've heard there are material schematics. So uh, we have, uh, I and mean, we have, you know, experienced developers, but we also have beginners. So can we start out with just beginners? Like what is a schematic? What I mean, obviously schematic is like an architecture thing, but for the CLI, like, um, can we just start from the beginning? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so at, at the like the elevator, pi elevator pitch of the schematics is basically it's a workflow uh, tool, like a programmable workflow. Uh, in the same vein as, um, oh my god, uh, just forgot the other name, but uh, basically generators or something like that, uh, where you um, where you can use it to transform your projects, basically from starting from one point and going to another. Um, more general, uh, more specifically, what we're using it in the CI is uh, when you do, Yoman, thank you. Um, yes, so it's in the same vein as Yoman. Um, and uh, what, what we're using it for in the CLI is every time you do ng-generate 
or even NGNU, you're basically using schematics to add uh, components, to add uh, new classes, or to create a new project. Um, and so it's uh, it's basically a library that people can use to create these uh, little workflows. Like I want to I want to add a new files, or I want to transform a file, or I want to add like a node dependency or something like that. So schematics are great for that. They're easy to use. Uh, the CLI uses them. And uh, hopefully you will too. Hopefully you'll develop your own schematics. <laughs> I had some guilt when I started using the CLI. I felt kind of bad because I get paid for this. And I feel like you guys just did all my work for me. It was so easy. It was like amazing. So, but I can, so I can, so I'm going to like, use this the schematic to like customize and automate my own boilerplate so if i want to take the, the cli and extend it and do more like something more specific to my company or my application then that's what we're going to do yeah basically um if you want to have like your own component or you want to have your own like ng generate i don't know dashboard or uh ng generate page that adds uh, a page, a service, the components, and everything that's needed in between, then it's super easy. And everything is composable. So if you want to create a, co a component, you can use our own schematics and then build on top of it. Add just the stuff that you want to add to it. Uh, so you don't have to redo the, the, everything we did already. Uh, we did a lot of work for you for free. <laughs> you guys are so cool. Well, that sounds amazing, but can you show us? Like, can you show us like how, like if I want to make a schematic, it sounds so mysterious. Can we like, can we make a schematic? Can you? Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, you're going to see yourself for a second there. So don't freak out. I'm going to freak out. I'm going to freak out too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we freaked out a little bit there. Yeah. I. Oh. It's reverse so, psychology, Hans. Yes. So what I did I here that. is I um, installed globally uh, the schematic Can you make it CLI. a little bigger? Oh, I'm now, sorry. Don't, now, don't go too fast with this, because you know this, and it's very easy. But we have to follow along with you. Yes. So when you develop your own schematics, um, we suggest not to use the CLI, because the CLI has a lot of logic around it. Uh, that makes it a little bit harder to uh, debug and maybe a little bit slower to debug your own schematics. So normally, so we developed a CLI specifically for schematics. And you can install that by installing the at angular dash dev kit slash schematics dash CLI. So you basically just install that. And at that point, you have a schematics um, tool that, um, well, we'll see in a bit. But that helps you call, cre uh, create, call, and use your schematics. So. I'm in a temporary directory right now. If I do schematics, you'll see I get the help, and it's basic helps. So I'm not going to go through that, but basically we'll talk about every one of these options. I know this this was this is the pinnacle of my engineering career right there. Um, so schematics it can create schematics the same way ng generate works, and so we created one that's called. Uh, that's uh, basically published under uh, schematic slash schematics. And inside of it, uh, we have a, uh, that's a collection. So a collection is multiple schematics where each name refers to a schematic. So in this case, there is, a, it's a collection that contains blank for creating a new project. And you can name it my, let's, let's create a different component. So let's name it my component. So what this does is create a bunch of files, the same way ng generate would work, except that instead of calling all the things around the CLI, um, because there's a lot of logic around the CLI, uh, what we did here is basically just create the schematic, uh, call the schematics directly as early as possible and then simply as possible. I think so, we may need to make it a little bit more confusing to say that this is, so what we have here is that we use schematics to run a schematic, to cr to produce a schematics project that will allow us to run those schematics. Yes, something like that. 
Okay. <laughs> I, I just I just love that because essentially what we've what you've created because uh, you are the one that wrote it, uh, wrote and created uh, schematics is a tool that is flexible enough that can be used to essentially recreate more schematics, which is oh, awesome. Yeah. And um, just to, to go a little bit further there, um, I'm 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 slowly working on a little set of schematics that we can use inside the CLI to help us develop new stuff. So when we add new functionalities and stuff like that, we could use schematics to help us develop schematics itself. Um, and so I created my component, which is in this directory here. Uh, what I'm gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna do is call npm install because it's just files uh, for now. We are working into adding what we call tasks, which is, for example, after my schematics is successful, I wanna run npm install automatically. Uh, this is coming in um, really soon. The, the CLI will add it in 1.7. Uh, but right now, 1.7 beta is out, but it doesn't add it. It's going to be the next beta. Um, but you'll see, it makes it, it makes calling npm install uh, redundant and not necessary. So um, what happens here is that I've got this structure, a few files, uh, package touches and a little readme that contains like a few lines explaining what's going on and a tsconfig uh, JSON. Now what I can do is I can run build um, that will build a t build a project. Oh yeah that's unfortunate. <laughs> so our tsconfig is uh, way stricter than our code, and because of that, I need to um, actually do this. I need to uh, do one thing before I can actually build it out of the box. Um, this is one of the uh, issues on our issue tracker, so that's going to be fixed. So it I works. I kind of love all these emojis that you have in your terminal. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Um, Thank you. And uh, so if I want to run this, what I can do is call schematics dot instead of you know whatever the collection I would like to use. So here I have a collection that we created. And inside my collection, we created the my component schematic. And if I do this, what will happen is nothing to be done because we're not doing anything yet. But there's a few things that happen here. Um, first, um, Using dot actually run in uh, dry run mode, so there's never going to be a commit done actually done or committed on the disk uh, when you run with the uh, the path to your uh, collection. And what we have here is we created a uh, schematic named my component in our collection here, and uh, that you can just start coding right away, which we are going to do. So I'm opening the new project in VS Code. Uh, you guys are probably all familiar with VS Code, I presume. And my machine needs a little bit, uh, there you go, a little bit of time. OK. So what we have here is a package JSON, like I said, a TS config. And we have the index.ts here that contains uh, my, we have the collection that JSON contains the information for my collection, and we have the index.ts that contains the code associated with it. So if we go to the collection, we can see that uh, my collection is a list of schematics. Just ignore the schema for now. This is just so that VS Code knows, knows how to do autocomplete on um, this JSON. Uh, inside my schematic, we have my component, which contains a description of blank schematic. So we'll, we'll just let it say like an ng Houston. And the factory is uh, imported from my component, and it's the function my component. So this points, the factory basically points in the same kind of vein as routes in Angular. So hashtag the export name um, to this function here. So schematics knows automatically to load this file, to take this export, and then to use that as a uh, schematics factory as a rule factory. So a rule factory, uh, a rule um, in schematics is basically the way to describe 
how to change uh, one file system into another. So we call we call those rule, and we call uh, and trees are basically a collection of files like folders and files, uh, almost like a file system, but all entirely in memory and adding a lot more complexity to it. Um, and so the factory receives a list of options, and um, just so uh, so the options normally come from the tooling like the CLI or schematics, or if somebody was to implement like a graphical user interface. Um, and these options are basically an object that contains whatever the tooling wants to say that is the user input. So options are always user input. So for example, if we just show up the log, the schematics tools by default, um, hello, Houston. The schematics will take every flag and transform them into a, oh, I need to rebuild it, yes. But transform it into the options. As you can see, I forgot to build, and we're going to fix that in a second. But if I do this, then you can see that it transformed automatically all the options, on the, uh, the arguments on the command lines into the option object. Now what I'm going to do to avoid having to do that again I'm going to run build in watch mode. So OK, that looks about right. OK. So the options contain everything that's passed on the command line. If it's the CLI, it's the same thing, except that there is a little bit more options that we add to uh, to it so that you can use um, some configuration options. Um, now, what we can do uh, with that is what we can, we return a rule that's, like I said, the way that it transforms from one file system to another. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a file. So we pass the path the file and we're going to call that file i don't know ng houston and as the content of ng houston oops, um let me just <laughs> <laughs> you're so cool hans nah. i like it Okay. There you go. And so if I do um, if I do schematics dot my component. Oh, I told actually, you guys he was silly. Yeah. So it would create ng then, which would contain 160 bytes. But like I said, it didn't. Because we're running with a, a path here to our package JSON, uh, schematics run in dry run by default, because otherwise you would be able to uh, easily uh, delete your entire directories. It happened uh, to Sebastian, actually. You know Sebastian uh, Vitilek? Uh, he created a schematics that were removing a bunch of files in the directory and deleted his own code uh, <laughs> by mistake. So. So what you need to force that is uh, schematics take an argument that's called dry run, which will, uh, if set to false, will force dry run to be false. And now it's going to create the actual files, which is called ng Houston, and which contains a hat. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, so you have to, if you actually want to do it for real, you have to put in that dry run false. And if you don't, and that is there to protect you from yourself. Yeah, exactly. Only when using uh, a uh, relative path as your collection. So if I was to install this inside another directory and I was to use it um, like as if it was uh, an NPM package, then uh, it wouldn't. the dry run would be true. Uh, the, the dry run would be false by default. I'm sorry. Yeah. So the colon is a delimiter. So the left-hand side of the, co of the uh, colon is the collection 
of, of the schematics that you want to use. And the right side is the schematic that you wish to run. And the dot is just the shorthand to say, hey, uh, the collection I'm using is my current directory. Yes. And this way you don't and I could, uh, mess up your current directory. Can, can, we, actually, use, can we actually uh, see the file that was created, like in the text editor? I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you well. Can you can we actually see the file that was created in the text editor? editor? Yeah. Did it really create a file, Hans? <laughs> I I well that's that's what it's supposed to do. So yes. There it is. There it is. Okay, so this might be a silly simple question, but um, I just want to kind of ask for clarity. So there are like two users in mind when we're talking about schematics, right? There's like the person writing the schematics and then there's someone who's consuming them but like a lot of the a lot of the talks i've seen so far you know we're on stage you're you're doing both you're both writing the schematic and using it to show that it works um so can you talk a little bit about like who who you imagine using the schematic tool to to make schematics and then can you talk a little about like how the end product would actually go on to be used by uh just average developers so you're, you're talking question. About, yeah, you're talking about usage. And um, so in the CLI, uh, we do have all the mechanics that allows us to change the collection. Um, and so you can do ng generate. Uh, so we'll, we'll see it. I'll do, a, I, I don't know how much time we have during this meetup, but at the end, I would like to do like a Angular CLI usage of actually publishing this uh, schematics. Um, not really publishing it to an NPM, but basically as if I was a user in a new project and I wanted to use it. Uh, but I can do that right now. Uh, so the target for this, for schematics in general, are uh, corporations or projects with more than one user, or even if you have like, you could have your own set of schematics for your own uh, personal templates or personal workflow, uh, like if you want to rename a class or something like that. Um, and for example, corporations could uh, could say like, well, we want every time we do ng generate component, we want the new component to have a header saying like, oh, the license and the copyright, and that kind of uh, that kind of feature. Uh, so you can definitely uh, like corporations are definitely interested in that enterprises for um, for ensuring that how all their users uses their own uh, uh, their own schematics, basically their own templates. As well, um, internally inside Google, for example, uh, we, we have a uh, team that's working on uh, creating schematics uh, that uh, for pages and dashboards. So they have a, they have a, they have an application template. That basically create a menu on the left, and every time you add a new page, you need to add a new route. You need to add a new link to that page on the on the menu on the left, and then like there is a default page template, and then there is like updates to uh, databases for uh, permissions and stuff like that. Um, so this is the kind of usage that we're talking about, where you would just at the end of the day call ng generate page and it will automatically add all the bits that you need throughout your app so that it works right on the way. Um, does that kind of answer the question? Yeah, it does. I might have some more questions when we see it getting used. Oh, please, please. Well, one thing yeah. to be clear, um, in terms of people who are using schematics, anybody that is using the Angular CLI version, I think 1.4 or something and later are, tech are already using schematics because the CLI is using that uh, behind the scenes. So they can be completely transparent to you as you're using them, but we've also exposed the ability to customize those, uh, which is what Hans will get to hopefully later on. Yes. So actually, um, what I'm gonna show next is how can you um, extend uh, schematics that already exist. Um, and I'm going to do that by extending by doing by extending um, the uh, component for, um, from uh, the CLI. So 
as we saw so far, uh, rule factory, just to recap, a rule factory returns a function that transform a tree. And uh, the CLI provides multiple rules that are super, that are easy and useful, like for people, they can, combinations of different rules, like there is a set of operators there and we and we provide a lot of them. One of them, for example, is chain. So instead of uh, re returning this, I'm gonna just comment it for now, uh, but you return chain, which is important from schematics, and chain takes a list of rules, and it will apply those rules one after the other. So we could have the same rule we had before. Um, and that would basically do the same thing. But we can also have multiple rule like that, and they will be called one after the other. So this would return a tree of some sort, and maybe tree.create, you know, um, hello, hi, toy. Let's, let's do options.name, and then hello world. So it just calls them one after the other. Another fact, another rule that we provide is um, external schematic. I think it's the same, yes. Um, so what external schematic do is that it takes the name of a collection and I'm gonna just take the name of the collection that we provide the CLI team for our Angular stuff. And it takes the schematic name and it takes a list of options. So I'm going to provide options straight out of the, um, yes. I'm going to provide options saying the source there is going to be app. Um, the name is going to be uh, ng component. No, not ng, ng Houston component. So what chain will do is call the first one, which will take the uh, name option, create a path with it, and then put hello world into it. And then it's going to call an external schematic. Um, it's going to try to find this collection somewhere. Uh, the logic by default is to look into known modules. Uh, and then it's going to call uh, component, the component schematics of that collection with these options. And what it does is a little bit more logic. Um, without getting too much into it, uh, we do uh, we do support JSON schemas for options that says that restrict basically what options can be. Like for example, we uh, we have a JSON schema that says that the source there should not be a number. So this would throw an error. Um, hey Hans. Yes. What, so just for an example, like what if I want, so I, I want every component in this uh, application to do the change detection strategy on push by default. Can I put that here? Uh, yes. Yes, you could. Can you show me? So you know what? We're going to do just that. So we're going to, whoops, pass the options from, uh, that we get from the command line. And then we're gonna add, uh, Mike, I'm gonna need you on that because I don't remember the name of the- It's change, it? uh, change detection is the name of the property. I think it's change detection strategy. Or oh. is it just- Change detection. Oh. And then uh, on push, capital O, capital P. Like this. Yep. So what this does is basically take uh, this object as if it was the option passed on the command line and then transform it, setting the default and validating it against uh, the schema that we passed. And then after that, once that's done, we uh, create the ng-usten file as it was before. So let's see what happens here. Let's Really so so if I wanted to just do like that schematic and I just put the external schematic and I just want to add like the change detection on push to everything so that I never have to type that again, then I just made a schematic. Yeah. And then I can just customize whatever. That's cool. Hey, Hans. 
Yes. To save you a headache, uh, put since this isn't going into an Angular project, uh, you're going to want to turn on skip import to true, because otherwise it's going to look for an, N an ng module which isn't there. Mike, if you could just stay uh, whenever we code and just like be there all the time and watch us, <laughs> that would be great. If you don't mind. Hey, these are just problems that I ran into before, so <laughs> I'm just familiar with it. And I, and I actually want to hear from Justin before we leave, because Justin has been using the schematics and has uh, probably a lot more experience, at least than me, for sure. Uh, so I'd be interested to, to see what kind of uh, words of wisdom Justin can share with us, too. Yeah, yeah they, they, might really be biased. they might be biased. I have a big time crush on schematics. So. Oh. <laughs> I've been waiting uh, a long time for schematics. I, I know. I, I feel like this is really the, the, the workflow tool uh, that like a lot of people have been waiting for a long time. At least it's in amazing. It's, yeah. I feel bad charging people for this job because I feel like I'm I'm, not, I'm like you're doing all the work for me. Don't tell my clients that. <laughs> There's plenty of work left, though. <laughs> like we're not we're not done with everything all of a sudden. So there's plenty of billing to do. Right. Um, so because I'm uh, so what I'm going to do is install ad schematics uh, slash Angular in my project. I'm also going to save it um, because now I need I, I basically need it uh, to run because we're importing from it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do dot like this. It's going to fail. That's interesting. Oh, schematic context is declared, but its value is never read. There you go. So build system works. Use wait, wait, what did you do? Place. You're going really fast because you know how to do this, but people watching don't know how to do this. Oh, so I had an error in my code. Um, because schematic context was declared but not used. Oh, so okay. So the, the, the build system TypeScript told me error schematic context is declared, but it's never its value is never read. So now I'm just going to remove it, remove the error, make sure that everything builds. It does. And then I can uh, remove ng Houston and stop, stop using dry run for now and just do this, which is going to fail. And I'm not sure why it's failing. I know How why did you know failing. it was going to oh, fail? Requires... You just said it was going to fail. How did you know that if you didn't know why? Because it was supposed to fail somewhere else. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you cracked me okay. up, Hans. <laughs> so, so I forgot to install RxJS, and my R schematics require a peer dependency of RxJS, so we need to provide it. And as well. Um... And then it will fail properly. It should. Let's, let's let's figure it out. Yes, should have required property name um, because you're in because you're working as a debug with a debug tool. As um, uh, we show, like schema schematic input does not validate against the schema. Error should have required property name. Um, you have a lot more information than with with the CLI. The CLI would probably just show should have required property name or something like that. I don't remember what we show in this case, but something close to it. So I'm going to just pass it that. It's going to fail again, I think, because no, OK, good. It does work. Um, so as you can see, it created the uh, hello file because name hello. Remember, that should contain hello world. Um, and it created the component as if it was from the CLI. And it created the ng Houston file. Um, so what I'm going to do from now wait, wait, on? Wait, pause for pause for applause. Oh yeah. But we want to go see it. We can we see and did it put the change detection strategy in there like it was supposed to? We don't know yet. Because if it but didn't, we're taking our applause back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were running in dry run, and I don't. I personally don't like changing the code I'm actually working on. Uh, so we're going to create a temporary. Actually, you know what? I'm going to create a. This is like doing a crossword what? puzzle in pen. You got to yeah. believe in yourself. <laughs> well, yes. 
I, I don't believe myself nearly enough. Um, and and so, oops, my component. And so this should this should commit the files. It seems to. There are files in there. And change detection on push. There, there it go. is. That's pretty awesome. You can applause. <laughs> Wait, you want extra applause? OK. <laughs> well, not only did was... he do it, but it actually worked. So yeah, that he, yeah, I think he should get double applause for that. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> I agree. It so, worked on the first try, which is a miracle for demos anyway. So is, is there a way you can actually force if a file already crea uh, is created to force it to recreate it, or you have to remove the file every time you want to like, uh, create? I was just wondering about that, Ilya. Do you read my mind? <laughs> so you cannot, uh, you have to delete it if you do it from uh the schematics itself but the user can actually force it um and we'll we'll talk a little bit about merge uh well we can talk about merge a little bit but yes you're touching a topic that's a little bit more complex advanced um so here you can see i forced it so if i um don't tell do... sebastian yeah if I uh, <laughs> add something to hello, so hello right now is this. If I run it without force, hello is going to still add the one, two, three. Of course, nothing is committed to this. Uh, but if I use force, you'll see that hello has been overridden because we force it. Now, there is, um, when you do Tree that create we rarely create files like this. Uh, we normally just uh, do um, we normally just do uh, you know read files from a bunch of places and then that creates them automatically, et cetera, et cetera. We we don't we don't call tree dot create tree dot rename. We normally um, use this operators like chain. There's an operator for moving files around. There's an operator to applying templates to stuff. Um, and there is an operator that's a little bit bizarre in its name. It's called branch and merge. Um, so if you think of a tree as a git repo, what branch and merge does is basically making a branch, applying a rule to it, and then merging it with master. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. So just to make sure that I understand what, I mean, because the whole thing is when, when we're, we're using this uh, CLI schematic to generate new code. So say I've already been working on this application for a while and I've got all this code written and then I decide that I wanna use change detection on push. And if I try to go back and like, I, like I could cause a lot of damage because it's, it's, it's meant to make new components. It's not meant to go and modify anything. So I can't add something. I need to just use that going forward. No. Uh, yes, but you can make a schematic that goes to all the files, to all the components, and change the change detection there. Um, I can just add it to all. Like I, I say, I have, I have these, all these components that are already built out, and I can add it without posing them and deleting them accidentally. That's a lot of code, but you could, yes. OK, Bill had a question. Yeah. Uh, Bill wants to know what it would look like to create a refactoring schematic. That's a good question. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. OK. Is this show okay. about a week long? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're not going anywhere. We're going to listen. We're going to hang on Hans's every word until he gets tired and, and, and leaves us. Okay. Uh, just, be just before that, can I ask another question? uh can we actually use like an async operation here when we're changing ch chaining stuff yes so um i just want to finish the branch and merge uh part because somebody asked about that so branch will create a branch of the tree so far will apply this 
to the branch and then merge it. And when you merge, you can actually pass a merge strategy. And in this case, we tell the system to always override, right? So what this is going to do now is basically pull a Sebastian. Oh, it will basically not work. <laughs> <laughs> But it should only uh, complain about creating those two files because we told we told the system that it's okay to overwrite. Uh, it's it's okay to basically just overwrite everything. So anyway, the second uh, the other question I'm gonna I'm gonna just move on and uh, take a note here. I'm taking a note that um, uh, no no no. I, so, so I think what happened is you said to overwrite just those files. If you were to comment out the first tree.create and the last one. Yeah, but it should still, um, it should still not complain about those files already existing. I see what you're saying. Well, it's hard so, because we're distracting you with these random questions while you're working. So yeah, but we just no, like to fine. make it a little more challenging for you. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Um, so what was the other question? Just a recap. I don't remember. Exactly. It was about refactoring. So, and and I think Mike was kind of hinting that that's a little bit more advanced. That that's not mm -hmm. really a. a uh, so I guess we could we could hold on that, and you could go through and make sure that we understand the basics, and then and then we could circle back to that if if that's okay. I, I want to go. Yeah. I want to lead you to one place, Hans. So the question was asked um, when you did the dry run of how do we know it worked. So oh, yeah. can you jump over to the spec file and show how we test? Please. Oh, that's a yeah. good question, Mike. You get a gold star for that one. I like oh, it. I'm supposed to heckle. Um, do your <laughs> test work? <laughs> You're being way too helpful, Mike. <laughs> yes, the test will work, but they're not going to test for anything, actually. We just, oh, no, actually, it's going to test for there is no files, which will fail as soon as I run the test. But um, basically, what we provide is a testing uh, sub package inside schematics for you that exports a schematic test runner. And from there, you can load a collection, uh, like the one we showed your collection basically. And you can, um, you can just run a schematics with a set of options. Three. And, uh, this would, um, this will run the schematics exactly as you would think it does. And then you can just take the, so the tree is a special tree. Uh, the run schematics returns a, um, oops, I think it's F12. Yes. The run schematics return a unit test tree, which contains a little bit more information about uh, debugging information and testing information. Like it can list all the files that it contains. And in, in our case, oh, I lost the, uh, in our case, we have, um, oh, we have we test that there is no file, but in our case, there would be files. So we would test for these files to exist, and it would pass again. Uh, the, the, the other question that I forgot, and that was a really good question, is uh, about in asynchronicity. Uh, so whether something like this could be asynchronous and yes the answer is yes uh so a rule i uh, didn't talk too much about the rules but a rule returns uh returns either a tree or an observable of tree and only the first tree will be used or void so it can return nothing which will use the same tree as the one that was passed um so here, instead of returning tree, what I could do is return new observable. Um, then set timeout of uh, obs.complete. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a little bit more involved than that, but. There you go. And so what this will do is um, oh. what this will do is um, 
it will wait one second before running the rest here. So what we're going to do to show you that it works, we're going to console.log. Actually, I'm going to talk right now about a little bit about the context. Uh, so, so the context is uh, stuff that are not related to, uh, oops, it's not at the right place, that are related to the execution of the schematics itself. And one, one such example is the logger. So because you don't know if you're going to run on the, in a browser, or maybe you're going to run uh, in a virtual machine somewhere. You don't you don't even know that. Uh, there's a console that log might result in nothing at all. Um, and so we provide a logger API that is basically relatively similar, like error fatal info log one uh, debug. That's fairly similar to console um, and. So if I want to log like information one, I can do that. And then if I do in the set timeout, I do two. And then what I'm going to do is come here and say three. So you're going to see one, two, three, basically, uh, because it's going to wait for the first one to turn to uh, finish. It's going to wait for the first one to finish. It's going to uh, run the second one, and then it's going to wait for the third one. It's going to run the third one. But this is just to prove that it's actually waiting for this. So let's see. There seems to be the, the oh, no, it's because I imported these two, but it's not used anymore. Same error as before. OK. So we're, we're going to see one, two three, and then it's going to error out. But as you can see, it waited one second before one, uh, before two, uh, after one. So, so you can use uh, any kind of calls here. If you know how to use observables, uh, you can basically use an observable to make it wait. Um, and uh, we have somebody who did like a call. Actually, we already do that. Um, so one of the a schematic that I developed, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago, that's about to be released and used in the CLI, is a uh, package update schematic that takes your package to JSON and update packages in it uh, to the latest version. You heard and it here thing... first, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing that that does is uh, contact the NPM uh, repository servers to get the package JSON on NPM to know which version to install. And then it updates your package to JSON automatically. So you can basically do anything and everything with uh, asynchronously with observables. Does, I think Bill asked that question, does it? Uh, was it? Bill was asking about uh, refactoring. Oh, I'm sorry. OK, yeah. Refactoring, that's a big one. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to delve too much into it, into the code. I'm not going to show it uh, on screen. But I'm going to say that you can read files. So let's, uh, let's pretend that you want to, actually, I'm going to delve into it a little bit. Um, so you can tree as a few methods to it. So let's go to the tree interface. Um, and this here. So tree has a few methods, including uh, read. So read can give you the content of a path as a buffer. So it's a node buffer. So you can do two string on it to get the string. And from there, you could uh, use the TypeScript AST methods to basically get an AST and uh, replace the content, and then you overwrite it, which should be here. There you go. Um, that's basically the best way to do refactoring. That's how we do our refactoring in our components. So what we do in um, our uh, dev kit, so code. So 
So what we do in the Angular uh, refactor, uh, the Angular schematics for refactoring, uh, adding to uh, adding to the known modules, for example, uh, to the ng module, sorry, um, is just what I described. We read a file, and then we get the AST out of it, and from there, so there you go. So this is the code for uh, creating a new component. Um, so I can walk a little bit through it, but it's a lot of code. So what we do is um, we set some special values that are calculated based on the other options. And uh, we load a bunch of files. Like I said, we basically load files from a directory, which gives us a new tree that contains just like create this file with this content, create this file with this content. And from there, uh, we remove, uh, basically, we remove files that we don't want. So if you say that you don't want spec, we will filter out files that ends with that spec that yes. Uh, we, if you don't want inline style, we're going to remove the style, the HTML, the CSS, or the CSS. And after that, we apply a template uh, function that reads the file, change all the variables in it. So we use a simple uh, embedded JS uh, kind of algorithm. And uh, after that, we move it to the source file. So we move every file into the, from that list. And these files are created in the root, so we move them to the source directory. Um, and so what we do is basically we branch and merge. Uh, we chain add declaration to ng module, which I'll talk in a bit, and then we merge the resulting uh, tree with what we just created here, the bunch of files that we just created, the new files that we created. And add declaration to ng module. I don't want to go too fast, but this is really this is more advanced stuff. Uh, so it's hard to really dumb it down. But basically what we do is uh, we get the module path. Uh, if you specify it, if you don't specify it, uh, we have somewhere, I don't remember exactly where, but we basically find it. Oh yeah, find module from options, sorry. So we set up the, the default as the module, the file, the path, the, the file path to the ng module. From there, we basically read it. We get the source text. And then we call TypeScript that creates create source file, which basically analyze that file, create an AST, an abstract syntax tree. And from there, um, what we do is we add we have a function that's called add declaration to module that um, it adds basically the 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 the, the, the the symbol to the declaration. And that uses uh, AST methods to know exactly where to get that, uh, the place that we want to insert. Uh, these functions are fairly advanced. It's not a small file. Um, just to show you like uh, in general. Um, so add declaration to module calls this, and this is here. So it's a fairly complex uh, string of you know, try to find the right place to do it and then find the, find the right index in the file, the right column and line in the file, and then uh, say that the text that you should insert is this, is um, uh, to insert and then insert import, which does basically the same thing. It creates a bunch of, uh, it looks at the import at the top and then tries to find out the right place. Um, like I said, this is pretty advanced. If you're interested in doing uh, refactoring, Two things, you should probably do your own research and uh, learn uh, the TypeScript API for that. Uh, but the other thing is um, we are in the process of building our own refactoring tooling. I can't promise a, a, a time frame for that. But that would make it way easier to uh, basically do the same thing. Uh, but with a lot less code and easier to read and at that point, well, I can just come back to uh, NG Houston and talk about that when that's available to people. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question, and Justin yes. has a question. Uh, my question is for both of you, you and Mike. Uh, is it exhausting to be this cool? 
<laughs> if it was yes. exhausting, I would do way less fatter. <laughs> I mean, I'm way too fat for something like that to be exhausting. <laughs> and Justin has a question too. Yeah, so then could you use TypeScript then at this point to find uh, essentially usages of, you know, like Bill asked if, if I had a class and I wanted to rename that class, could I use TypeScript there to find the usages of that class within my code and then have that give me back the list of things that I need to update and change names and stuff like that? Yes, so um, we don't have one uh, available right now, but there will be a uh, compiler host uh, TypeScript compiler host that map onto a tree. It's fairly simple to do if you want to do it yourself. And from there, you can actually compile TypeScript from a tree, or you can uh, use a type checker to see usages of a uh, symbol uh, through your code. Um, it's fairly easy. It's not. It's not. It's not simple. But if you know uh, TypeScript API already, it's not that hard either. So can we just take a moment to like soak all that in? The fact that <laughs> yeah. why, why schematics, why I'm so excited about schematics and why everybody's excited about it is that it just opens the door. There's so many things that you can do that you have this foundation, right? That now all of a sudden, all these things we're talking about, oh, they're doable, right? They're doable. You have We have the platform to do that in thanks to the schematics that y'all are providing. So I think that's awesome. So yeah. that, that function that Hans went through, that uh, add uh, ng module or a declaration to ng module, all that basically does is when you generate a component, it'll automatically put it into the closest ng module. So it'll automatically import it into that module file and put it into the declarations list so that you don't have to do that manually. But that's a lot of logic to do one simple thing. So that's why I was talking about the refactoring being a complicated process and much more involved. Um, yeah. But it does open up a whole lot of possibilities by being able to do something or things like that. Um, Hans, do you want to talk a little bit about the future of ng update? I, I know we've talked about it before, but the kind of power that that will unlock rather than just updating the package.json. Yeah. So the first version of ng update, which is slowly coming and hopefully in 1.7, but maybe in 1.8. Um, but the uh, the, the, the big thing that is going to come is the packages and the update. So the, the, the package is an update. So that will be made available really soon to people. And then further down the line, what we're going to do is, uh, well, I talked a little bit about a refactoring library. But we're going to spend some time designing and implementing that. Uh, we have a pretty good idea where we want to go with that. Um, and once that's available, what we're going to do is uh, the ng update will also uh, refactor your code so that every breaking change in uh, Angular, Angular, or Material, or uh, well, we're in talk with Native Script. We always talk with the, the people at uh, Firebase and Angular Fire, for example. If they have any breaking changes between versions, they could use the refactoring library to, to say, well, like look through the code, and if you see this pattern of usage, change it to this other pattern of usage. A good example would be um, Material um, Material released the script before they released their, uh, their final RC. But uh, at some point during the, the betas, um, they changed. They had, before it was ND dash, um, you know, component. So ND button, for example, and change it to mat to prevent a collision with uh, Material Design 1 for AngularJS. Um, and so they, they, they had a script that basically looked through all your code and saw if you tried to use any button, then rename it to mat button, M-A-T dash, uh, dash button. And, um, but this is really, uh, they did it like using regexes and basically trying to figure out where, where that was. But with a real refactoring and AST aware tool, you could, you could guarantee 100% with every project that what you're doing is not going to be uh, going to result in errors, basically, um, because you will only change what you know match. Um, like we will, we would. That would be an example of ng update doing stuff from Material, where we rename ng button only when it applies to a Material 
uh, component and not like if you declare your own component and debutton, we would be smart enough not to do that because we know the context. Um, and that's the future of ng update. I cannot promise on a date. Um, it's basically gated by the this refactoring library because I don't want to do the work twice, basically doing it once and then redoing it when the refactoring library is available. And I say I, I'm sorry, I say I, but it's really we, the Angular CLI team. Like, uh, I might not even touch a single line of code of that, but it's going to be a great project made by great people. I just want to do a shout out to, you know, um, Charles, Philippe, uh, maybe Mike, I don't know. <laughs> no, Mike too. <laughs> Mike too. Um, and we should get them on the show continue. next time. I actually don't what? really know Philippe and Charles, but we should bring them. Yeah, they're I great. I didn't know people. you either before, but you're pretty cool. Yeah, uh, they're, they're cool people too. They're great engineers, and uh, it's really an awesome team. I'm really blessed to be working with all these people. You should bring um, them next time. Yeah, uh, it might be complicated for Philippe, who lives in Dublin, but uh, definitely uh, maybe with some advance notice. It's remote. Ilya's here. It's two o'clock in the morning where Ilya's at. Yeah, that looks that looks approximately the time that is in Dublin right now. Yeah. Well, Ilya yeah. has a meetup too. Maybe Philippe could go and visit him, and then at least they'll be in the same time zone. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, Paul has a question. Hey, yeah, so um, this thing is obviously really, really powerful. Uh, and I've seen some of these things. I'm hearing like plans for schematics. I'm like, hey, I, I know of a node module that, that I can that I use now to do that. So like, kind of like, what's where's the line? Where do you see the line between we should use a schematic to solve that problem versus this should probably be more of a node module kind of thing? Um, like a script kind of thing? I don't know what you mean by a node module. Like, uh, so for example, you're saying you, you have this thing up coming up where it'll uh, automatically be able to update your package JSON to the latest version. You know, like I, I'm aware of an NPM script for uh, like an NPM install, I guess like node check updates or something like that. That, you know, it's a command line utility. I can go and grab it and update my package JSON files with that. Yeah. And so it's like, it's not like with this file tree manipulation kind of stuff, we're kind of like getting into the territory of like, hey, that could have been a node module instead of a schematic. I'm just wondering what, like, ha has anyone kind of thought through where's that line, you know, between that should have probably been one or the other? Because I'm sure there's uh, use cases where one tool is better than the other. Yeah, and um, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna, uh, well, okay. So schematics is really workflow, a workflow library. And, um, at the end of the day, like somebody remarked to me, like everything's a workflow. Uh, you know, you, you you sit in front of a computer, you will turn on your computer, like this is a workflow. Uh, you want to add a component, like this is a workflow. Like there's a lot of scripts, and there's there is already Yeoman generators for adding components, for example. Uh, and there are scripts, like you said. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, create scripts. I think that's the new like that creates projects for you. Uh, Webpack is coming with like a Webpack create that creates like a, a small Webpack uh, projects for you automatically, and then you can like start playing with it. Um, there is a lot of overlap. Uh, there is. I don't think there's a line. I think it's more like a uh, it's more like a Venn diagram, like stuff that schematics can do and stuff that other tools do already. Um, there are advantages to schematics, and there are some of the advantages that we're working to. Um, so one of the big advantage, which is coincidentally the biggest disadvantage as well, is that schematics by nature doesn't have don't they don't have side effects, right? So as long as you're not as long as you're not uh, committing, uh, the same code is run, but there is no side effects. So when we create, uh, I'm gonna try to, yeah. Um, when, when we create a file here, uh, options.main, we don't actually create the file. We just tell the system like, oh, I would like to create a file. There's no side effects here. If, if, the, if this here kills the process for some reason, there's nothing done on this. Um, 
And so you can be sure that if you run a dry run, for example, it will be a real dry run. It's not going to be, um, it, it's not going to like, even if it crash in the middle, it's not going to do something weird. Uh, because everybody would develop schematics if they want to change the file system, they have to pass through this API, uh, and we control that. Now, the biggest disadvantage of schematics is that there's no side effects. So if you want to, if you're making side effects and it ends up being a problem later on, if you want to make a side effect, it's really it might be complicated, it might be tough, um, and because of that there are some stuff that you cannot do so we're working on uh tasks for example uh, and tasks are basically external scripts external files that you want to call like for example you want to create a new git commit uh, or you want to npm install because you changed the package transition you want to call npm install uh, normally right now you cannot do that because if you try to call npm install it's not going to call it at the, at the right time it's not going to call it with the right properties uh, the file system will be inconsistent, so schematics will might notice and say like, no, 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 there's something wrong with you. Uh, I'm not doing anything after all. Um, but because because there's no side effects, you cannot call npm install yourself. So we're working to alleviate that by having um, we want to provide like some kind of services like an HTTP client, so that you can make calls to a server in certain conditions. Like you can say like, oh, make a call to a server. Uh, and this call, this call is safe to be made. There is no side effect in this call, um, when uh, even when you're running dry run, for example. Um, and we have tasks which only execute after your schematics are finished, uh, which says basically when the schematic is successful, run npm install then. And if npm install fails, well, it's not too bad. It's not much of a problem. The user can figure it out itself. Um, so the majority of these tools that I know of, like even Newman, Newman works by writing to the file system directly with fs.writefilesync or something like that. Um, and I know there is some package, some stuff that upgrade your package JSON uh, thematically. That also works with fs.writefile. So for example, if you do, uh, if you run Newman to create a new component and you know it creates three files and then it blocks at the fourth one, well, that's going to be an error. And, and your file system is going to be in this weird, inconsistent state where you have new files, but you don't have the full thing applied. So you're basically in the middle of nowhere. You're in limbo. Uh, and that's the big thing that schematics allows you is that to make, as a user of schematics and ng generate, you know for certain that uh, if something bad happens during the schematics, nothing is committed to disk. Nothing is final until you say so. The other thing that I find to be a huge advantage of schematics over, say, just an NPM script like the um, package updater is that these are schematics were built from the ground up to be extensible as well. So the external schematic one to pull in an external schematic will allow you to compose your own collection. Um, if, say, you want to pull in the component from the default and maybe NXs. RxJS or any other the schematics that you want to compose and say, hey, I want to pick and choose what co my collect or my collection is going to do, and you can do that yourself as well as extend each of those based off of the logic that you want. So that extensibility is extremely powerful. Yeah, that's a really good point. Scripts like Node Updater would not be able to be extended in in, in a way like that. Hey. Can you uh, make a point too about the fact that like what you just talked about in terms of changing the file system, right? The fact that like if we write our own schematics, we really want to try and avoid that, right? I mean, that's the power of this is that we can use the tree to do all this stuff. And then if it, something fails, it didn't actually touch the file system. So I think it's important, right, for people to take that approach. Is, is that correct of, of trying to not do that in your schematics and use the tree to do all that file system changing? Yes, and my, my goal, um real soon is that we're going to introduce a sandbox mode for schematics that basically tells the tool that this schematics is safe uh, it doesn't use anything else because right now what i can do and that's kind of counterproductive but um don't don't do that at home kids but i could do it is i could do like write file sync 
and nothing prevents me from doing that. Uh, with a sandbox mode, um, we're going to have the tooling, the CLI, and the schematic CLI that we, uh, we just saw to uh, prevent this by saying, like, oh, require is not a function, for example. So don't, don't do that. That doesn't do anything. Um, Can I clap for that future sandbox? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and just to show you the, how, how powerful this is uh, and the sandbox as well, uh, and this this might blow your mind, but uh, Stack Blitz. I don't know if you ever used uh, Stack Blitz. Uh, it's a editor inside your browser, and so we've been in touch with them, and they told us that they are looking at uh, using. They have an internal demo that uses schematics inside their editor. So in their browser, when you when you will create like a new component, for example, it will use the schematics, and they will support uh, adding custom schematics. So you could even like use. Let's say uh, Justin has a new schematics that he wants to share. Uh, you could use that inside their browser. So outside of a node environment, there is no node involved at all. Um, and this is kind of insane, but I, I'm I was super impressed when he was telling me that. The Speaking other thing of stack blitz, had... Eric is going to be on the show next week. One of the guys. Oh, awesome! Yeah. yeah. The virtual file system also allows the tests that you write to run extremely fast without any side effect, as Hans mentioned, so that those tests, like I said, I've written lots and lots of tests for schematics, and they run incredibly fast because of it. Yep. Cool. So to, to, to sum up, let me see if I got it right. So we got a, obviously, across the board, it's a higher level of abstraction, uh, allows for greater extensibility uh, and reusability, obviously. Uh, and it is also geared and tooled out of the gate to work well with the broader Angular ecosystem. Does that kind of like be the summary for kind of why you might choose schematics, you know, or why something from NPM wouldn't be a good fit for your problem, you know, pitting, yeah. pitting those two against each other? Yeah, definitely. So uh, can you cool, show thanks. us a way, uh, for example, that we can debug our schematics? I'm pretty curious. Uh, definitely. Uh, so I'm just going to rewrite that a little bit. Like this. So what I'm going to do is uh, put a debugger statement in here. Um, now I'm going to do this. It's going to fail, isn't it? Yeah, it does. Wait. Oh, what is, what is going on? Oh, yeah. More. I think, I think it's you, Justin, that complain about like the TS config being way too restrictive. Was that you? I mean, I don't know if I term it as complaining, but maybe. Well, point it out. <laughs> okay, so if I remove hello. Hey, Hans, real quick, this. I gotta run. I love schematics. Oh, okay. And we love Bye, you. Mike. Thanks for coming. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Come back soon. Bye. All right. See you later. Bye. Um, and uh, Mike is caretaker next week, so if you want to annoy him, create issues. Just create issues, a lot of them, because he has to read all of them. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. No, we'll do it. We got you, fam. <laughs> Please don't do that. I miss uh, Mike already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so I added a debugger statement here. And I'm going to use the uh, node uh, inspection tooling to um, be able to debug my schematics. So I use the same command as before. I use which because it tells me where schematics is because I don't, I never remember these kind of things. But if you have the full path to your schematics CLI, then that works too. And so this goes here, Chrome uh, inspect. And now I can uh, do this. I'm going to go. Oh, and do not hit. If I did something wrong. Debugger should be there. Let's try again. Demo gods are not with me today.
Dun, dun, dun. I know. Oh, my God. This is really, really. Don't worry. You're doing way better than I would be doing right now if I was driving this. Oh, it's embarrassing. I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Don't don't hate me for that question, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Ilya's <laughs> fault. <laughs> yeah. Well, Probably the, the truth is, life. there is a. Um, I want to add also a few a few other things that are nice uh, for debugging, like better statements and stuff like that. Oops. Oh God. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that you shouldn't do for debugging, but <laughs> just we'll just tell him do as do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Um. I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with my setup. Yeah, it's my setup that's not proper. For some reason, it does work as expected. It just doesn't debug it. Huh. Oh, wait. Let's see. Debug on pause on card decisions. Well, I'll, I'll be done. Um, So I'm just going to say it. This is still a work in progress. If you want to debug, the best way to often to debug is um, like context.logger or just console.log debug. Tree that's how I debug. I love to debug like that. Like, I don't know why that's bad because I do it. I'm not ashamed to say it. Oh, don't, don't be ashamed. I do it all the time, too. But I like, uh, I like the tooling here for Chrome, uh, for Node. But but uh, it's possible oh. to configure, for example, Visual Studio Code to debug your schematics in it, right? So yes. Uh, unfortunately, I use WebStorm. I just use uh, VS Code for uh, demo purposes. So I'm not sure exactly how to do it. But I know there is. I know some people have come up with a way to. Yeah, you have to generate like a launch, launch script or something. <laughs> yeah, it would be great if somebody would do like a schematics for that, for example. <laughs> That's a nice idea. <laughs> yeah, so the program would probably be um, schematics. Their arguments, args would be. A workspace folder. Call in my component, and then dash dash uh, name equal my name. All, all, all files, I don't think that matters. Let's see if something like that would work at all. Oh, it's not absolute. OK. So which schematics? Let's use this. There you go. Let's try again. Maybe it's going to work. Oh. Well, it worked, except that uh, it didn't hit my breakpoint. Let's see if it would hit the debugger. Yeah, it does. Well, cool. <laughs> so I have no idea why Chrome didn't work properly. I, I, I do not know, but uh, this works pretty simply. Um, mm. Maybe. So Maybe because you have to like configure the source maps and stuff <laughs> like that or something. Um, maybe. Uh, maybe that's what happened. So tree that exists. Um, false. I don't know where we are. What's the current directory actually? So process that CWD. Okay, so we're in temp my component. So 
as you can see, we have a package to JSON. So let's do the package to JSON. And that's, that is true. And so if we read it, it's going to contain the buffer. If we do two strings of the buffer, so you can just do that. Uh, you can look at the files. Um, so one thing that we do not do, and something that we okay, something one thing that uh, one gotcha that we definitely want you not to do is um, list all the files. For example, so if we do tree dot, there is a function called visit where we get a visitor. So uh, for example, this will take the file path. So this is a file path. Um, and it will visit all the files and call this function with the file itself, with the file path. Um, so this takes a long time because when I say it goes through all the files, it actually goes through all the files. So you can see that it takes a long, long time. And this is a small project. So use visit only if you know that you're doing the right thing. For example, don't list all the files because that will list like the node modules and stuff like that. And for large projects, this can take like 10, 30, 30 seconds. Like the first version that we did of uh, the CLI in some cases were taking over a, mu a minute to create a new component because we made a mistake, we listed all the files. And because of that, it was reading all the files in the directory and node modules contained a lot of files. Uh, any other questions? I, I think this is awesome. Go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. All right, if nobody else has any, I have a couple. Okay, so first, I want to ask question, another question that Bill had uh, and kind of a confirmation on this for getting IDEs and editors to integrate with running schematics. I mean, the fact that schematics are a command line thing that we could run at the terminal makes it pretty easy for us to even out of the box for a lot of IDEs and editors set up our own scripting in there to run those. But some editors have already started adopting that as well, right? Yeah. Uh, I was talking about Staglitz. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you. So any editor who wants to integrate uh, schematic CLI, like, for example, if VF extension, we would definitely be open to that, to that idea. Uh, the schematics uh, CLI itself that I just showed using is 275 lines. And most of those are actually comments, comments explaining exactly what's happened, or like we have, you know, twenty line explaining how to use it. Um, so it's not it's not a lot of code. Most of it is really simple. We encapsulated a lot of it. Um, and if you have something like you don't want to run in Node, for example, you want to run in a browser or using your own file system, like we do internally inside Google. We don't have npm, for example. So we have our own um, schematic engine host that tells how to create schematics and run them. And it's fairly simple to uh, to implement your own. So if you're an ID developer or um, and and you want to and you want to implement your own usage of schematics, it's relatively simple. It's well documented too. And then is there? I know that WebStorm has it right now where you, there's a Angular CLI context menu option that you can click. And I think they just call the ng generate help command to get all your schematics. So whatever schematics you have right now in your default collection, they'll surface in WebStorm in the context menu. And then you just click on one and and then type in your list of options for there. Does, yeah. does anybody know if VS Code has something like that or if somebody's made an extension already for that? I know there is an extension for Angular CLI, but I think it just lists the default uh, schematics for it and it calls uh, ng generate in the back uh, in the background. So it's basically a wrapper around uh, using the Angular CLI from the command line. Cool. Now I have one more question. Uh, yeah. The schematics, you know, when you create these schematics and you have your um, collection file and everything like that, all the information's there for the options that could be run for the schematics as well as the different schematics that are within a collection. Uh, is the Angular CLI team or the schematics team working on anything for auto-generating documentation for those? Or is that a space where somebody in the community could potentially create something that would you know, scan those things and just kind of keep a living document of what all the schematics are and what the options are for them? 
you mean scanning like uh, scanning the the npm repository for collection that JSON? Is that like like if I that, had if I built my own schematics for a company and I you know and I wanted to surface a an instruction cheat sheet that said here's all the schematics that you have and all the commands just look at that for the information mm -hmm. and I make a change in my schematic I want to regenerate that living document. Um, so so in the CLI um, we do have that when you use the ng help command on generate now we look at the schema uh, we look at the schematics. We take every schematics, we show you the description of the schematics, and then we take the schema and show you the options that you have available uh, for it. So uh, if you're familiar with a schema, with a JSON schema, you'll, you'll know what this is. But basically, like, uh, it de describes an object. And for every uh, field at the root, it's like if it's, a, if it's a flag, and then there's a description. So you know the, the directory. Uh, argument to create a new application, which is in, uh, what NGNU uses. So the directory is a format of path, uh, and the description it shows the description of the directory name to create the app in. So if I do ng help generate application, it will not work because uh, let's see if I can do that globally. I'm not in a project. Yeah, so um, let's see. So basically, yeah, that's what we use for uh, the help. Basically, that's what I wanted to do. So there is already a use case for that. If somebody wanted to adopt it to output some meta sheet, like a cheat sheet, like you said, uh, as a PDF, that would that would be great. That would be something that we would uh, definitely look and uh, probably put in somewhere. Um, more globally, uh, we are thinking, but this is far off again, uh, about like a marketplace or somewhere where people can actually put their uh, their collection and publicize it, and then say like, "Hey, if you install that package, it's going to do these things." Can I do that. So oh, yeah, um, did that answer the question, uh, Justin? It did. Thank you. And Bill says thank you very much too. He really appreciates it. I told Bill he's not allowed to ask questions in chat anymore. He has to come and be on the panel from now on. He's reached his quota. <laughs> we need to get Bill in here. Bill's never been on the panel. What's up with that, Bill? So I know, Hans, you've probably been working all day and you're probably getting tired, but I think uh, Paul had a couple more questions for you. Oh, go, go ahead. with us yeah. for a few more minutes? I know we're, it's, we're, we're gonna wrap up pretty soon and let you go because I know you have uh, things to do, but this is fun though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so uh, my questions, hopefully they should be pretty quick. Uh, I've seen like a lot of uh, NPM package namespacing flying around through all the tools that you've been using and showing. I just want to see if I can't like get these straight in my head. So I've seen um, like the two primary namespaces I've seen on the screen are at Angular dash Dev Kit and at Schematics, yeah. and then under those I've seen like at Angular dash Dev Kit slash Schematics dash CLI, and just at Angular dash Dev Kit slash Schematics. Can you kind of outline like what what are these things and how are they different from one another? One more time. So, so the uh, schematic CLI is uh, just the debugging tool that we've been using so far. Mm -hmm. the, the little schematics uh, command line tool. Uh, the so okay, let me back up a little. Scopes, npm scopes. Um, at Angular Dev Kit is uh, it's the Dev Kit. It's all the collection of tools and libraries that the CLI team uh, provides as part of a greater effort. So the dev kit is a little bit. It's the dev kit is a great effort uh, to um, decouple uh, everything that's used under the hood in the CLI into libraries that can be used independently. And schematics is really the first one of that. Um, but we're gonna have others like the build system, uh, refactoring, uh, updates, and all that. 
for uh, so so that they can be used um, independently of the CLI, and that the CLI becomes just you know uh, one interface to that set of libraries and tools. Okay, so um, what is the schematic? So add schematics is just the scope that contains all the schematics that the the team officially supports. Uh, you don't have to, to use schematics. You don't have to install a schematic from that namespace. Uh, these are just the ones that are officially by Angular team supported. And we do that uh, because uh, we don't want, uh, we want people to know that they can trust it. And but we don't want uh, at Angular, for example, to be crowded because there's a lot of packages in at Angular already, and we want to reduce the number of those packages instead of adding to them. Makes sense. So following on with all of that, um, like I came up with those npm packages by way of just saying like Googling, you know, Angular schematics. And so my my final question is like, so if I I'm I'm convinced I'm ready to try making some of these to try them out for my team. Where do I start? Kind of like, where is the the starting point you suggest people go to to kind of start dipping their toe in the water here? So uh, we did a little bit a little tutorial here, so that's a good starting point. Basically, the, I guess this is recorded and rewatchable, right, uh, Bunny? Yes, yes, it is. Yes. So uh, you could watch it. Uh, you could tell your friends to watch it. Um, all the content from this presentation comes from a blog post that I'm writing uh, that will be kind of a first step tutorials uh, to creating your own schematics. And that is going to come out uh, in two weeks. I don't want to promise anything, but I, yeah, next, definitely not next week because uh, we have people on vacation uh, the week after. So before the end of January, there's going to be a full medium post uh, explaining like as a sort of story, like tour of heroes kind of thing, uh, how to get started. Everything that we discussed here. So it's going to be the same content, just maybe a little bit more uh, information and links, URLs. Awesome. Thanks. That was really. This was uh, my brain is a little bit tired. I can only imagine how tired your brain is doing this <laughs> after uh, after working all day. And uh, I want everybody to say hello to Sebastian because we, we were talking about Sebastian in the chat, but the chat log doesn't persist. So everybody say hi, Sebastian. We need to get Sebastian on the show too, because since we've been we've been picking on him, uh, but, but we got to send a lot of love to Sebastian. Yeah. Hi, Sebastian. <laughs> so uh, you're going to come back. You're going to keep making this cooler and cooler and cooler and come back uh, often and show us the latest cool stuff that you're working on. Oh yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. I know this was supposed to be educational, and uh, and it was educational, but it was it was super silly too. So <laughs> this was fun. Thank you for coming on the show, and thank you, Justin and Ilya and Paul and Bill, and uh, and thank Mike for us too. I know he had to go, but it was really yeah. awesome. Oh my goodness, you guys! My daughter just brought me pizza. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, well, it's getting late. We're going to wrap it up, but uh, thanks again. And next week, we have uh, Eric Simmons from Stack Blitz coming on to teach us some cool stuff. And so we will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right, thanks a lot for having me. And, have a good uh, night, everyone. Have a good night and happy new year again. Bye. Thanks, Hans. <laughs>